Grand-rising, my friends. Hey there, what it look like? For those who rock, I, I decided we're going to go with the people who subscribe to me are the most beautiful people in the world. That's just a fact. So you want to know if you're beautiful or not? Look down at that. You subscribe. That's what it is. We're just going to go with that on a daily basis. <laughs> um, if you're new here, Masawa. Uh, the market was horrible yesterday. We this, you know, we talked about that. China is gonna, China probably is doing what America did to the rest of the world. American and some in some other Western countries in 2008, 2008, 2009, a sense where the chickens have come home to roost. And if you don't understand what the expression means, which some people may have never heard that before, that means that the things you do, like allowing these companies to get real big, being lenient with them, um, turning a blind eye to the excesses of their executives, that eventually, I got another expression I want to say after this too, eventually it becomes a problem that you you have to deal with it at that moment. It won't be able to push it off any further. Um, my friend who says the expression when we were little kids and it always stuck with me. And I tell the people that, and they don't quite understand it, is that you've heard it before, but the other part of it, most people haven't heard, which is um, don't cut corners. And the other part of it is don't cut corners because eventually you run into a brick wall. And you have to understand that when some people think of cutting corners as, taking a shortcut as when you're as opposed to going to the, the uh, route you may have to go down and around um, a building they try to cut across through a parking lot you know when you're driving or even when you're running through, through sidewalks but eventually trying to keep taking those shortcuts you're going to run into a brick wall <laughs> that you didn't plan to be there you're going to turn where everybody else is going straight and you should have went straight and you're going to hit that brick wall very hard so the markets didn't didn't do too bad today, but at the same time, um, at earlier um, the Dow and S and P were up as well as the Nasdaq, but the Dow and S and P ended down today. Uh, the Nasdaq did not; it ended up. So some of the companies in there, like Tesla, Apple, I believe, probably Microsoft as well, were positive on the day, not by much, but a little. Crypto market is really starting to take a turn for the worse. Um, I don't expect it to go much further, but, you know, A, it's not financial advice. I think I may have forgot to say that yesterday. Never financial advice. Just never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever, ever financial advice. Um, this is not any advice in any way construed in this reality or throughout this dimension in a sense of anything. The people who subscribe to this are the most beautiful people in this solar system and we're going for a galaxy next we're going to have a pageant at some point the so the market yeah it's not looking good right now but it's on sale if you have the money if you haven't got in yet or you had a little bit this is where you just first you should be dollar cost averaging just buying a little bit every now and then not by every now and then or set them out like once a month every two weeks whatever it may be just a set mouth this is a point where you say i got a little bit extra the market's on sale. Things are on sale. I can get some Cardano for cheaper. I'm going to do a series where, you know, I think I'll talk about it a little bit later. I may be mistaken. I think I do. Or maybe tomorrow. I get confused sometimes. Um, the Cardano was really about to, there where Ethereum was at probably four to five years ago. Not in a bad way, but in a way of, in a sense of starting off with their, you know, they've been having some some things going on in terms of NFTs and decentralized exchanges, but it's really starting going to start off with Cardano for the next, Saturday, you know, rest of our lifetimes. But so this and Cardano is at two dollars and three cents now. You know, that looking at some stuff the other day it was at nine cents, six cents, but just get it a little bit at a time so that you can start practicing and learning stuff and then. Maybe, you know, a year or two from now, things are much bigger, but you have a better understanding because you've just been 
playing a little bit at it or, or learning, you know, on a basis and teach yourself, then you can start to say, okay, I know where to go with this. I have this. That's how opportunity works. You have to kind of prepare yourself so that when it comes, you're able to start making those moves that you need to move. So not going to be uh, belabor the point too much with that. Um, you know how the game goes, the people in your life that, that you love, that love you, and you want to show them that respect, go ahead and say something nice about them down in the comment section. And the comment, in the comment section and send them this video, share it with them and say, hey, take a look at what I wrote about you. And, you know, there's nutbag that I listen to, but sometimes he, we talk about some things that's interesting and they'll, they'll be appreciative. They can learn something, too. Maybe they'll learn. Hold on a second. Apologize to that. I'm a. On call, first time they gave me a call. They didn't even call yesterday, but it's all good. So let's let's get into it. Australia to buy Tomahawk cruise missiles will get at least eight nuclear submarines. I don't know if you've heard or not about this. It's been kind of a lot over, but if not, so it's a funny part, and we'll get to this other thing. This is like a Tomahawk right about to hit a ship. Yeah, this is like some footage of it, some test footage of uh, from Raytheon. Raytheon is a public company that can be traded who make these Tomahawk, Tomahawk missiles that the Australian and soon to be, you'll see, Canadian Army will be Navy. Army too, probably Air Force, we'll see. We'll get all the piece of these. But anyway, so France had a deal with Australia to provide submarines. I believe they probably were diesel submarines or they were not nuclear submarines. The submarines supposedly were not that good. Australia was upset. France was not the most receptive to their concerns, unbeknownst to them. The United States and the United Kingdom approached in Australia and formed a, an alliance, which they now call the AUS. What do they call it? AUK? Like the AUK? Something's down here. There may be it's further into the story. But anyway, so they formed this alliance between the three to say, hey, let's all work together. And we're going to, you know, we've already, oh, here it is. The, a new trilateral defense cooperative pact simply dubbed Australia, United Kingdom, United States, or Oskowski, Usk, whatever. <laughs> the uh, AUKUS. The initiative includes plans for increased cooperation on the development and fielding of new long range strike capabilities, as well as the nuclear powered submarines for the Royal Australian Navy, among other things. So France is real mad about it all. Upset, they recalled their ambassadors from the United States and from Australia. Not from the UK, though. It's interesting about that. I just now thought about that. Interestingly enough, maybe don't even have, maybe they don't even have an ambassador in the UK already. But I, I'm looking to see why the UK is avoiding any of the ire of the France. French government in, in this uh, France and the French government in, 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 in this issue. At the end of the day, look, the United States and the UK are offering the ability to build in Australia nuclear power submarines. What you think they go do? Come on, let's be, be let's be realistic. I'm not gonna go through all the story and go through blah blah blah. That that's the basis of it. You you you're now caught up. But in, in the midst of that, they also go now sell them also. Tomahawk cruise missiles, which will enhance their long-range strike uh, capability. The stealthy JASSM Yars will similarly expand the Royal Australian Air Force's ability to prosecute targets. To prosecute, we we're just going to prosecute targets with these telephone poles of death. <laughs> that extended ranges. According to official announcement, missiles will be integrated both into Hornets and. F-35 Lightning, so the fifth generation stealth planes that the United States build, Australia. And you know who, who else is also very angry about this? Because why are we doing all of this? You know why. Our friends here. And I mean, we should all be getting along. It's silly, but you know how it is. The Chinese are not very happy with China's response to the partnership. The move of the U.S. and U.K. to export highly sensitive nuclear submarine technology to Australia is extremely irresponsible. It is outdated Cold War zero-sum mentality and narrow-minded geopolitical, geopol geopolitical perception. So... Of course, we're doing this to put China on a on a on a 
odd footing that if they do think they're going to start war with the United States over Taiwan or over anything, one of our allies over interests in the South China Sea, that we will have a nice staging platform from Australia to come. But if our troops, you know, I love our troops, you know, you know, I'm a uh, true blue American. I, the implementation of America has not always been the best thing, but the ideas did do sound really well. And if you can just get past and not get, even get past, we got to deal with a lot of things. But understand, you know, you can't just let anger rule you all day. But you have to when you look at, well, what what can we make it be? What has it been? It's been great. It's going to be great. It's going to be even greater. So, but anyway, now I get into uh, rah, 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 let's, let's go for that. I just, you know, in terms of how I, I, I look at it in my future and where I want to see things, that America can be an awesome place for people. That's why people want to get here. It is what it is. We're doing this because we want China to know that if y'all mess around, we are going to do our best. That's why we pivoting all the way from the Middle East. Everything is now focused on, and we got some other stories coming up about uh, plane boats and everything that we are focused on. What can we do to stump China if they think they are going to, because we ain't fighting at our home. We're going to be fighting at their home. And if they think it's going to get down like that, what do, are they really willing to pay that price? They really want to get their nose bloody with the, the 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 best fighting force on the planet at the moment. You know, and that's not and not said in any hyperbole. That's literally the reality of the situation. Unless there's another fighting force that we're unaware of here. You know, never know. Scientists just identified another mysterious surge in the atmosphere due to humans. So, you know. I didn't think I would be talking much on here about environmental concerns, but as you go through the data and you start seeing things, it really get really scary sometimes where it's like, hey, these things didn't exist before and they exist now. And are we just going to walk around like that's not happening? And that feels very scary. So levels of molecular hydrogen in the atmosphere have surged in modern times due to human activity. They found this by drilling into the, uh, the deep into the ice, getting ice cores out in Antarctica where you can really see different eras of time preserved in terms of the atmosphere and you know come on we know this i'm sorry i'm talking to you but some people may not so i, I try to explain molecular hydrogen is a natural so you'd be like hydrogen not that bad molecular hydrogen is a natural compound of our atmosphere due to the breakdown of formaldehyde not really good for existence of humans, but it exists in amounts that we can tolerate. But it's also the byproduct of fossil fuel combustion, especially from automotive exhaust and biomass burning. While hydrogen doesn't trap heat in the atmosphere on its own, it can indirectly impact the distribution of methane and, um, uh, and ozone. So that's where the problem becomes. And they just looked at the, the, in the snowpack that they found there was big differences Air samples in South Pole, South Pole of Antarctica suggest atmospheric hydrogen jumped from 330 parts per billion to 550 parts per billion. That doesn't sound like much to me when I read it. I was like, you know, it could be a, a huge difference. But I was like, eh, it doesn't sound like that much. I mean, it's almost double. It's two thirds at least of increase. I don't, you know. But. Then again, I don't know, you know, what the end, it could be an incremental increase that 10, five more is something that could be a problem. So we just have to keep our eyes on that. What are we doing? What are we doing? I think they find it, like they said, is a leakage. There's another discrepancy in a data set. But I, I guess, yeah, this one is where they're not really clear that there is another source of um, this molecular hyd <clears throat> hydrogen that is not being accounted for by our, you know, with, with their study and in terms of our, uh, what they call fossil fuel emissions. So could it be something from our green technology that's also causing a similar problem? I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. That doesn't mean we don't keep trying. We keep trying. We try to get better. We will make mistakes.
So, the, yeah, they think it could be. Not sure if it's still from emissions from coal combustion or seriously understudy, but substantial leakage. So, something to keep an eye on. Are we indirectly causing just as much or some damage with our quote-unquote green technology? Is, you know, I, I, I say things and I just want, I'll, I'll ask people who know me. This is a, a, a positive show, right? We get we get good information. Happy times here. Sometimes it seems like be not the best news. With Alonzo Dunn, Cardano teases big partnerships in the pipeline. So this one, yeah, this was here. That now that the Alonzo fork was now allow smart contract smart contract functionality to be used on a Cardano blockchain, and smart contract functionality allows for if then statements meaning and, and and one of the most important words to understand in crypto and another stuff i'll tell you in a second one of the most important words is trustless at first i was like oh no that it turned me off and i was like uh, uh, but no once i understood it i was like oh oh my god it's the best trustless means you take trust out of the equation if i make a bet with you or who's going to win a super bowl even if I win, I have to trust that you're going to pay up and I don't have to come looking for you or bop you on your, on your, on your noggin to get my chips up, huh? I would never do that. But the, I won't lie to you, I may do that if I have to. <laughs> the uh, trustless system say that okay we bet on who's gonna win the super bowl you say all right hey, hey the buccaneers are gonna are gonna repeat this year and i say man no they not any team but them are gonna win okay you can make a smart contract put your money in put it on a blockchain so you put your, your smart contract with ethereum and that on a certain date and the oracle would be it will take the readings from let's say the the um the ESPN ticker, ESPN.com ticker, NBC.com ticker, Barstool's ticker, Washington Post, Washington, you know, all these, you can pick all these things that say on a certain date, they're going to say who the Super Bowl winner, such and such Super Bowl was. If it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, pay out such and such amount to such and such person. If it's any name but that, pay out that amount to such and such person. And you don't have to trust anymore. Once y'all both agree, submit your uh, money to the blockchain, to the smart contract. And the smart contract set up that if one person doesn't submit theirs, the first person get paid back their money back. So you set it up to where I don't even have to trust anymore. It's trustless. The system is set up to be, quote unquote, and take this with a grain of salt, perfect to where I don't even need trust anymore. That's what trustless means which is beautiful when you think about it, is that now it, it, it takes out that fact of uh, they go try to rob me on this or they go try to. So you go to do a deal to try to think of somewhere, uh, purchase real estate, purchase auto, uh, a, a vehicle and you don't want them, you know, later or whatever it may be that they can change the terms of the contract later. And that, but, you know, a and everybody can't be coders, but you got to make sure that the contract, as much as possible, that you're getting involved in is fair. You know, the thing I was going to say real brief and not going to stay too long is that it's so many scams. There is no free money right now in the NFT space. People will send to your wallet. You have your wallet of um, like you have your MetaMask in your wallet. And so in OpenSea, you can see your wallet attached to your MetaMask of all the things that you own. People will send stuff free to your wallet. They'll pop in there like, oh, look, it looks like a Board 8 Yacht Club. It'll be like Board 8 Not Club. Let's just use that, for example. And or crypto, uh, crypto thugs. <laughs> and when you click on it and start to enter, it'll say, oh, you can sell it or you can bid on this for cheap. Once you start to interact with that inside your wallet, it steals all your information and steal all your stuff out of your wallet. So. If anybody sends you anything, you can hide it. Don't even look to delete. You can just go to say hide. I don't even want to see this ever again. But don't, there is no free lunch. You know, on YouTube, you see this, hey, Elon Musk or Kathy Woods or Mark Cuban is saying, send me such and such amount of ETH and I'll double and send it back to you or Dogecoin. Those are all lies. Everything, no, there is no free lunches. People are stealing money from people. 
You see people crying all the time about, oh, and then I called them. They sent me a text message, a direct message, and said it was you to, like, there may be a point where under my, in my videos, you will see a bunch of fake things that look like me talking to people saying, join this telegram or join this or this person. That ain't me. I'll never, I'll never contact you. Believe that, Meshach. <laughs> I'll never, ever, 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 ever. That's, I'm just not cut like that. It ain't nothing, I ain't nothing I need from you. I don't want any of your monies and I don't want nothing. So anybody saying that, they lying to you. It ain't me. So, and, and believe that for anybody. They, they lying about everything. This is a dirty, dirty space. This, we're in the Wild West where things about to pop off. And they people trying to steal from people trying to get rich. So, you know. But that doesn't mean you'd be scared. You go in there with your, with your, with your six shooters ready to pop somebody. Bop, bop. So, but but Cardano has a, um, a meeting, a, a conference this weekend, the 25th and 26th, where they're going to talk about partnerships. They're going to release and open up all of the smart contracts that have been waiting to be processed on the, the network. It is about to be the Wild West. So get in on the ground floor. You want to be involved in somewhat mint some of these NFTs for like twenty thirty dollars right now and the fees with cardano are way cheaper than ethereum so if it says it's thirty dollars you can pay like like thirty dollars and twenty cents so get in now um this one clay nation i bought into if i think it was maybe like 60 bucks the other day 60 70 80 i think it was like 32 if i can't remember how much it was but it wasn't it wasn't that much it was like maybe a hundred dollars now them things are selling about three thousand a piece four thousand a piece and that's just the bottom. The, the the top ones are even more. I saw one sold the other day for eighty eight, eight eight. So eighty eight thousand eight hundred and eighty eight Ethereum. I didn't even do the math at the time, but I was like, that's over hundred some thousand. You know, I think it was when it was like two fifty. So it don't matter. It goes back up. It's eight hundred eighty eight thousand eight hundred eighty eight Cardano for a JPEG. <laughs> I'm joking. NFT. So. This is, we're going to get on the ground floor, we're going to do some videos, kind of like figuring out where, as the space start to declare itself, and you got to be careful, there's going to be a lot of scams, a lot of rub pulls, we'll go through on that, but do our best to try to find some good projects to get in and ride that. So, Steve Cohn throwing himself into it, he used to be one of those people, you know, smug individual it's a lot of these guys he he owns the the mets i think maybe even the knicks too or some very smug guy i think even during the whole wall street bets and game stop that he was one of the yeah i think one of his companies when he like bailed out one of the companies who he was involved in this though but you can look at him but now he's his son got him interested and now he um is invested in a nft company and you know he, he a rich dude so he can do this and his family company is invested in a recur a platform which buys and sells which fans can buy and sell nfts and also he's invested in a crypto trading firm so yeah he see what time it is he he, he, he thought he was you know, so smart somebody opened his eyes up like man you being silly homie i ain't even gonna waste more time with buddy over here because like i said you too got that smug look interactive brokers i don't know too much about them but I, it may be a reason why you will see here and i'll explain here in a second um they're going to start allowing their clientele to buy and sell cryptocurrencies and it's a uh, i think a much an online brokerage platform much like robin hood so what's the difference between interactive brokers and why may you may you not have heard of them while you have heard of robin hood well robin hood has 18 million clientele versus 1.49 million for interactive brokers. Let's say IB. IB from now on, gonna be interactive broker. IB, right? So 18 million for Robin Hood, 18 million for Robin Hood. I'm showing in my hand like I'm holding 18 million real high in the air. 1.49, one and a half million for interactive broker. So you're like, okay, well maybe that's why. Robin Hood is far more popular. Yeah, I agree, far more popular. You can, if you can't tell in my voice, I probably sound, I'm, vi I'm trying to be very sarcastic and, and in a way, because, well, no, yeah, okay, yeah, Robinhood has eight, eight, 18 million customers and about $80 billion under assets, while 
IB has 1.5, and I'm showing small in my hand, tiny, 1.5 million customers, $360 billion in assets. So more than four times as much money that they control with then Robin Hood with, you know, nine times, nine less, nine times less individuals or so. So they're very rich people, it seems, that who uh, <laughs> are involved in IB, and they're going to be now allowed to get involved in trading. What is it? Uh, the, of course, the, the, the standard bears. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. So more institutional money coming in the mix. Institutional investors increasingly put focus on altcoins. New study shows... After investing in Bitcoin and driving the asset prices to new levels, institutional investors and wealth managers are now focusing on altcoins. And, when, and they're saying they expect in the next year. And they, they were talking to individuals in, where did they say? In the United States, UK, United Kingdom, France, Germany, and the UAE, United Arab Emirates. And they collectively control $275.5 billion in assets. The individuals they um, surveyed in this, and a lot of them see that they're going to think they're going to be putting a significant amount. Some a third said significant amount. By twenty nine, said kind of a gradual investment into altcoins versus Bitcoin. Specifically, seeing that many DeFi protocols have seen their market cap increase dramatically over the past year, with valuations rising faster than Bitcoin. These assets address real life use cases and are based on greater programmability than Bitcoin, reflected in their price dyna dynamics. It is no surprise, therefore, that forward-looking institutional investors and wealth management man wealth managers are increasingly paying attention to this emerging part of the crypto market. So we are going to be investing to even if it's a dollar. If you can't get a dollar two to come in with me on this, I'm going back to that Da Vinci, J Da Vinci. A freaking dollar. Get a freaking dollar. <laughs> I like J Da Vinci, Jeremy. The so we look, I no complaints. I'm I want every day everybody on here, my five or six, seven people, to come and be like, I, I got my dollar saved up. We go, we're going to be ready when it's time. Get my Coinbase. Get Coinbase because uh, I don't know if Cardano is on Gemini. Probably on Kraken. But, and Binance US. I mean, hey. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about it in a couple of days. But, yeah, Coinbase is back down from um, their lending they were going to do. You know, after the SEC was just saying, we're going to sue you. But, okay, but can you tell us what we're doing wrong so we can not do it? No, 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 huh? What? Okay, well, is it not a problem? We're going to go ahead and start this problem. We're going to sue you if you start that. We're going to sue you. So, not going to keep you all long. Hey, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.